Hello again, lovely people. I just wanted to make a up, another update video. A um, few things. There's been a bunch of code updates, which I'll go over after. This video will probably be pretty long, so I'll do it in a few sections. This first section is going to be about the actual body stuff changes that I've made, the new legs, etc. And then I'll do some code updates, which I want to share with you all. Some important, some about a new walking gate. And then I'll do a little demo of her new walking gate. So... Okay, so first of all, yes, the new legs. As you know, we've redone this side of the knee, beef, make it more beefy and more sturdy. And then in my previous video, I showed that it was time to go ahead and redo the other side as well and make that much stronger. So all my prints are all done already, so I'm about ready to reassemble the legs, but yeah, it's a bit of work so I haven't done yet 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 and I most likely will film it also because it'll be a good assembly video as well a little out of order on my playlist but so be it so yes everything's working great um, just a word of advice so my first prints I printed them the way that I did the original leg covers which is probably contributed to their weakness which was like this flat on the bed but by doing that the 3D printer's layers were like this. So let me change your perspective right now. So the layers were like this. So by doing that, it made this piece right here very, very weak, right? It has layer lines going like this, so it's pretty easy to snap it off this way along those layer lines. So I'm, I'm fairly new to 3D printing. I mean, about six to eight months now I've been had my 3D printer pretty much for this project. So I'm learning as I go. So what I decided to do in this case, and it changed the way the support was, this one I have not cleaned up yet so you can see, as I sit it now flat on the bed like this. It actually uses a lot less support and makes a lot of the other features much better. For example, no support anymore in this wire chase, which is awesome because now it prints nice and clean. Let's see if you can see that, sorry. Reverse cameras always get me. Okay, so yeah, it, it prints everything much cleaner. The only problem is the, the support material now is on our visible outside of the leg. So it cleans up not as well as if there wasn't support there, but it, it cleans up pretty nicely. It takes a bit, and as you can see, I <laughs> injured myself as I was cleaning this one up. So do be very careful. Um, but anyway, yeah, it makes this now much more stronger because now the layer lines are going like this. So it, it's no longer fragile on this plane, as well as, as of course, we thickened it up two or three millimeters. So I've just got to clean up my uh, support materials on this last leg, and then I'll be able to put my legs together and be back in shape. Um, side note, yeah, my repair that I did which was basically just to slap a piece of plastic on there with super, super glue, worked beautifully because it's been, you know, I've been testing her and walking with her for a couple of days now, a few hours total, so it's held up. But of course it's ugly and I'm risking and waiting for the other ones to break. In fact, these back legs still have the old um, other inner knee component as well, so... And while we're on that subject, let's just show you the difference here. I think I could swing her leg around this way. I can. So if we look now at the difference, this is one thing that I wanted to share with you. There, now we have less clearance. I'm pushing it pretty damn close to the body right there. So be aware of that in your coding and in your movements. Um, and we talked about that in the last video with the USB there, as well as this reset button. So this takes me into my next segment. Somebody has suggested, and I think they did, move this reset button to the back. That's a great idea. I think everybody should do that. I probably will next time, or if, I reprint this cover again. Um, actually, I don't think that hole is in the cover in the STL file. I drilled that hole in there. So anybody who's going to relocate it, you're good to do that on your own. And while I'm on the topic... The USB port could probably be relocated too to avoid the problem I was talking about last time, but I really don't know what else you could do with it other than force yourself to plug it in inside under the cover, but rather than having a hole, an access point in the cover. 
but I think that would be a pain in the butt when it came to development. But luckily for you guys, I've done a lot of the development, if not most of the development, so you shouldn't have to do much anyhow. Okay, next comment is um, my PS2 cover. I did not put the holes in the cover in the STL file, and as you probably can see, it's not exactly straight because I hand drilled the holes, and that really bums me out. So you may want to put holes in your lids if you plan on putting that in. Um, there also were not holes in the unit itself. I ended up using um, threaded inserts on, on this piece and then screwed it up through the cover. Okay, um, what else? Yes, the knee clearances be aware of. Um, I, I noticed it because on this side with my nameplate, it just about touches it. Just in normal up and down movement, as you can see there. So, yeah, that, that's something to consider. Um, if and when I ever reprint these legs too, I think I'll get rid of that third toenail, dog toenail aesthetic look right there. It, it adds two or three millimeters that we could shave off without affecting the new structure of it. So I'll probably do that one day. No time soon. I'm having fun programming her now, so I'm, I'm tired of redesigning plastic. <laughs> but yes, the legs had to be done, so those are done. Um, and then one more comment I wanted to make is she's very sturdy now with these new changes there and, and this joint has always been sturdy, the coax joint. Our only really weak place now is, is right here and unfortunately there's really nothing we can do about that. But all that rides on is the servo horn and the gear on directly on the servo axle. So I did mention in an assembly video I think that I used Loctite on all of those um, servo to screw to gear connections for that purpose to keep it nice and sturdy but somebody corrected me and, and I need to mention that yes using Loctite red I think I have it right here is not the greatest idea and I also showed that in another video and talked about it that this is kind of a permanent <laughs> Loctite, so that's why I had very difficult trouble getting them off. If you use just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, as I explained, you can get away with it. But anyhow, to correct myself, and thanks to a viewer, um, blue Loctite is what you're looking for, which is not a permanent, but still gives you um, the security of the connection that you need. Okay, and then lastly, the stand. So this stand works great, however, it's her knees do hit it in testing so it annoys me and it does sway a little bit because it's not the sturdiest thing ever so I decided that a cone or really a cylinder but I slightly tapered it would be more sturdy and provide the best center support without obstructing any of the legs so I have had to redo the seat part as well this is my prototype basically it's going to work as a cap because her bottom does kind of snap right into this cutout right here. So this almost snaps right onto her bottom, just like another piece of her body. And then this is tapered a tiny bit, so it'll fit right onto the cone that I'm printing, nice and tight, and then we'll have a nice sturdy cone stand with a slightly wider base. So that's going to be really helpful in development especially. I am... Um, yeah, like I said, th this old stand was good for building, but once you start movement testing, it does tend to sway and, and feel scary, but I've never had it topple over on me. But this will be much more sturdy. Okay, guys, so, um, oh, one more thing is the MPU unit is working, install great. It, I have a little bit of code going for it just to maintain our balance, but it's not integrated into anything yet. That's on my list to work on. The ultrasonic sensors are working great. Same there though, there's no code to drive them yet. And then, uh, as you notice, I removed the PIR sensor that was on top there. And reason being is because I had an idea of, I really love the way that works. So what I want to do is install three of them. <laughs> I know, sorry. One on each side and then one in the front. Because I think they're, they're pretty accurate. 
like if I, I move my hand up around the side, it won't see me until I clear any view plane, then it'll see my hand. So if I have one on either side and on the front, they should each have their own clear detection. May even go for one on the back, but not right now. Because I also scored these nice little tiny ones that have their circuit board and terminals all facing in a great direction to just plug them right into the, her side, her sides, and then one in her front. And then I'm going to play around with some code with that. Either make her avoid obstacles, or I was also thinking it could aid or even provide us a way to have her follow you. Right, because now I'll be able to detect when a human gets close. The unfortunate thing is they can't detect distance. They're just going to detect once they see infrared uh, body heat, basically, then they'll trigger. So if I can use the three of these to do some kind of trajectory, I should be able to track if you move here to here, etc. And she should be able to turn towards you and, and walk towards you. So that'll be some fun. All right, guys. So that being said, let's move on to some code. Um, if that bores you, jump ahead about 10 minutes and you can see a few minutes of her new walking gait in action. Okay, so here are some software updates. Um, first and foremost, I created a new calibration script, well, altered the exi existing one, uh, so that now you can fire off any one or all of the 12 servos at once, whereas the previous script forced you into doing one leg at a time. Um, and the second major change is it now uses a copy of our same Novos, Nova Servos file, configuration file, so that we don't have to copy these numbers and be typing them all over the place. <laughs> so you can use this one in calibration, and once you got, are, you're happy with all of your numbers, you can copy this into the main code. Okay, uh, just real quick, here's where you set them just a little array so you'll set each one active in this case I have them all active if I wanted to disable the coax server servos I would just set them all to zero okay and then down here a little bit um, I did add a note here I think I've mentioned this before when you're testing and calibrating be very very cautious of legs colliding into each other locking up etc so always be ready to hit that power button um, so yes, you can set the speed, default speed of them, number of loops to perform the tests, so that you can sweep them, and this will sweep any of the active ones, and it sweeps them from home to max to min, back to home again. And then you have test min, test max, and test home. Essentially, if, the, if any of those are on, it'll go to those positions. And there's a little delay in between, three seconds, I think, yes so that you can set multiple at a time. I don't think I would set sweep. Well, yeah, that probably would still work, actually. It would sweep first, then go to min, max, etc. So, so there you go, new calibration script. Okay, um, in addition to that, we've made some changes to the main code. Uh, I have changed the version now to Nova SM3, and this is the mega code version 4.1. So one important change that I did make to the code, and many of you have may have experienced this, I have previously and really have never known what to do about it. And honestly, I still don't, and I don't like this solution. So I posted this on the Arduino forum and did get a response that doesn't help much, but it helps understand it a little better. Basically, I explained that you know when you're connected to your device and you're coding in the IDE and you click that upload button, it actually will be executing code in your setup loop or function. And, you know, I, I couldn't figure out what to do about that or why or understand it, etc. And yes, it was explained to me in here that when, when you're connected via serial lines, it first creates a reset, which puts all IO pins into output state and starts the bootload code over again. So from there, it set, it's basically resetting the Arduino so fast that yes, it manages to fire off some, if not all of your setup routine. And in the case of working with servos and initializing them in your setup routine, yes, it was sometimes firing them off 
whenever I would click upload, sometimes not. And that was annoying, if not dangerous. Not physically dangerous per se, but dangerous to breaking my servos. So, you know, he didn't have much suggestions. I mean, he started getting specific on the servos, which I, I don't really want to deal with. And there really was no other alternative, but except for one of my suggestions, which, which was just to add a delay at the very beginning of this setup function. So that, so that's what I did. I just simply added a three second delay. So it, this will ensure that yes, when I click upload, even if she reboots, I've got three seconds for the IDE to reconnect and, and establish connection with the Arduino before it finishes off rebooting essentially. So that seems to work. Um, I could probably go lower, but three seconds, that's, you know, in human terms is not a big deal to wait when it starts up. So I just wanted to point that out, that if you experience that problem with any project, any Arduino code, it's worth throwing the delay in there. I haven't tried it in front of the serial begin and all of that, which I just may very well, but I don't think it would make a difference. Uh, there's a few other minor changes throughout the code, but the most important is this the new walking gate that I'm working on. So first of all, this is the PS2 controls. These are just the joysticks. Um, essentially, we have a Y direction, X direction. Let me back up. Y direction, in this case, is being used for forward and backward, forward and reverse. X direction is using the le turn left and turn right. Z direction is for moving up and down, and then move steps is how much of a step she's going to take, the increment of her step. Okay, in the case of the walking gate that I'm working on right now, it's kind of a marching gate. So when I start the gate, I want her to basically march. Sorry about that. I basically want her to march in place <clears throat> until I start moving. So that's why I'm keeping the move steps to a minimum of 40 so that she'll always be moving. But this, as you notice, I want to give a little switch on the PS2 to, to turn that on and off. But I'm going to show how this gate works after I review this. I thought that this would be a good time to um, review essentially how my sequencing um, code works in case you guys wanted to play around with it and, and write your own. I think this is probably one of my better uses of it yet since it's not too long and it's pretty clean. It'll give you a good explanation and example of how to use it. Okay, so first of all, step march takes in those three parameters that I showed before. Move steps was the fourth parameter, but that, that is global, so that's always accessible to us. I'm right here, this is just for dev while I was testing so I can manually set them and not have to use the remote control. Okay, so this is all essentially moved on what, yes, I have dubbed as fake kinematics. A few of you have called me out on that, asking me what the hell do I mean by that. Essentially, you know, true kin kinematics and inverse kinematics is all based on trigonometry and calculus and, and crazy math that, yeah, just escapes me. And, and I, as a hobbyist, I, I like to struggle through things rather than just go find the formulas out there, try and plug it in and see if I can make it work, but not fully understand how it works. So I'd prefer to take the, long route, the longer route. Um, point of note, I don't deal in degrees with these servos because the PWM controller doesn't either. It uses PWM pulsing. So I, I just stuck with those numbers through this whole project. I've never saw a need to convert. I mean, yes, it would be great for you can look at it and visually say, oh, I want to move that leg 45 degrees and go in here and type in 45 degrees. But uh, I, I felt it again, <laughs> I like to struggle. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so my fake kinematics, quote unquote, is me figuring out the ratio between the movement of the three leg segments to perform a certain movement. So in this case, the march basically, I wish I had a diagram, raises her leg up and down, but in that process gives it a little bit of a, a, a circular motion, okay, by using the move steps. So then if I increase the move steps, it'll increase that circular motion in either direction, okay, which I'm hoping will local, move her forward or and or backwards, right? 
So it was an iterative process to find the ratio between the, the servos, between the legs, to make her, her move these, these types of moves, but that's why, you know, I could have used math, but again, I, I didn't. So that being said, here are my move factors, and then there's a move Z factor for her up and down movement. Again, I have figured out the ratio to pretty much make her body move straight up and down, as you've seen in some of my videos showing off my fake kinematics, quote unquote. So I just carried that ratio here. So now when I change the Z factor, she's just going to move her home position essentially up and down in a straight line. And that's what these factors define. Okay. And again, like I said, these first four, these first three factors define her somewhat circular step pattern. And then that in conjunction with speed factors, because now you can see I'm not moving these guys in the same direction. So if move steps is one, they're not obviously all moving the same amount of space, but the, the distance in conjunction with the time that you move that distance, you can time the arrival and, and start and end and all that fun stuff of each three joint. So in the case of a marching walking gait, I really want them all to start and end at the same time, all three joints. So I, again, have pretty much carried this um, ratio into the speed factors. Now, the speed factor doesn't really, isn't as incremental, so that's why they're whole numbers instead. <clears throat> so anyway, that, that's enough said about the factors. Okay, then I fact, uh, calculate all the distances, the positions based on those factors and based on the three coordinates, let's call them, that I'm passing in, or distances. Okay, so that happens down here. <clears throat> so the first thing I do is define, uh, so to use the Z direction, the Z axis, it's really affecting her home in the process of the walk. Right, so her normal home stance is standing up in a mid position kind of way. But if I want to affect the Z axis, she's got to maintain a, a different Z point. She's always going to want to go home. So I couldn't use just a straight up home, otherwise she wouldn't be able to move in her Z axis. So basically I'm affecting her home position with my Z axis to affect her gait height. So while she's in gait mode, the Z height will affect her home position. So because that, I really had to redefine the, the home um, parameter variable uh, array that we carry around. And I'm making basically a copy of it called gate home. So this way now I can affect those home positions and still be able to use them through iterations of her marching. And this is a little ugly and a little cumbersome. I put a note here, but I really didn't have much choice because her tibias and fibias move in, or femurs, sorry, I always do that because her tibia and femur joints move in opposite directions in the case of this gait. One's moving in plus direction, one's moving in negative direction, and then the left and the right move in negative and positive direction. So this is a little ugly, but that's what I had to do right now, guys. My apologies. <laughs> okay, so once I have all that stuff set, now I can calculate her move steps and the speeds. And side note, I still have an issue or what I'm starting to think is not a weight or center of gravity issue because she balances in the center and her legs are well calibrated. I can't do much better. But yes, still some of my previous walking gates, she drags her rear legs. But I'm starting to suspect, and you'll see in my demo of her walking gait, that it's really about not just her center of gravity in her dead weight, not moving, but when she moves, I'm no physicist, but I think that center of gravity is changing a little with momentum and inertia and, and her wobbly weight movement and all that fun stuff. So I, I think it's not related to a physical center of gravity. I think it's software and just physics. Um, that being said, I did take, had to go back and still use my weight factor that I had in my code that I was hoping to take out when I solved my center of gravity issue. So I had to reuse it here. And right now I'm only applying it to the back legs. Basically what that does is I can adjust that factor. So if I tell it to, okay, move the legs up three units, this weight factor will say, well, move the back legs up 
10% more than that to compensate for the extra weight. Weight in quotes, because again, I don't think it's an actual weight problem. I think it's a momentum, inertia, you know, kinematics problem, which again, I'm no physicist. I'm a hobbyist. Okay, so that being said, yes, currently I am using it only on the rear legs, but I think from watching how this gate performs now that I think it, depending on what direction she's going in, that factor has to be applied to other legs as well. So I'm still going to play around with that, and again, you'll see in my demo how all that works. So essentially, let's try and ignore these weight factor calculations right now. Basically, they're the same calculations as the others, just with that factor included. So for each servo, there's a um, move step factor, or move step distance in this case. We've already set up the factors. And then the speed. Okay, so I define that for each of my three, or 12 servos, but each of the three types of joints. And then I start sequencing. Now that I have all of my steps and speeds all calculated and ready to go, according to the joystick data that came into this function, now I run the sequencing. Okay, and the sequencing works like this. So you pass the update sequencer function, the leg that you're moving, the actual servo that you're moving, the speed that you want it to move at, then its position you want it to move to, and I'll explain this code later, and then its step in the sequence. This last variable or parameter is for delay, which I found that I don't use much because I do it in code instead. So that's what these if statements are doing. So this first one says, okay, if, if the if the right leg is not moving, it checks all three servos are not active, and we haven't started a sequence yet, aka sequence is set to zero, then start walking. Okay, so the first thing it does is it steps the first paired legs, which is the right front and left rear, it moves those up. Okay, and it does that by using our new gate home, and then in the case of the tibia, it subtracts its value. In the case of the femur, it adds its value as, as for the coax. And then for the opposite leg, it moves opposite because it's a left leg. As I've talked about before, we have negative and, and positive coordinates there. Okay, and then the sequencing, um, you can track each servos sequence, but in this case, I'm moving them synch synchronously. So I only need to track each leg's sequence. So that's why these basically just are repeating this one, but I'm, I'm passing this update sequencer step one or sequence one for the right front leg. Okay, and you'll see why that's important in a second. So it moves those legs and then it comes out of this if. And now it checks, okay, if that right leg is done moving by again checking if those three are active. So when this movement is complete and servo sequence is now at one, which this will be, the update sequencer updates that, then it fires off the other pair of legs to get those two moving upwards. Same kind of code right here that we just saw up there. And at the same time, it brings those the first pair of legs back to their home, their gate home. Okay, that's st step. That's finishing off sequence one by moving the second pair of legs and then bringing the first pair of legs home, which is the start of sequence two. And then to end it off, when now the left leg is done moving. Okay, I don't have to track both legs because they're moving in pairs. So when all three of the servos of the left front leg and the left front leg is now at sequence one, then I know to fire off sequence two, which is basically homing those second pair of legs. And then when I am done with my sequencing, I reset all the sequences back to zero. And yes, next iteration, this will pick up here again and, and start the whole sequence all over again. So that's how my sequencing code works. Um, once you get the hang of it, it, it's pretty cool because you could go on and on and on. There isn't a limit to the number of sequences. In this case, I only needed to lift the legs up and put them back down. As I explained, I've already tweaked out the actual elliptical movement by using a ratio and the speed ratio to, to accomplish that. 
But if you didn't want to do it that way, you could actually physically say, okay, move straight up in a line, then move over right a little bit, move down a little bit to, to create your own circle. And it would probably take, you know, 20 sequence steps. So it, it's a pretty flexible system. You can have some fun with it. Um, yeah. So there you go. There's the code review of the new walking gate and how the update sequencer works. Now let's take a look at the results and how Nova is responding to all of this code. Okay, guys, so let's have a look at what her new gate, gate can do. So as I've explained in the code video, that the, the joystick now are all coded. So I go forward, backwards, left and right. And then the other joystick is for up and down, her Z-axis. And then the steps increase and decrease. So I'm still getting used to how these controls work uh, in the gate. and. This is really at 4 dev, so I can see how she moves and then put some of this in the code. But it's going to be a combination of her, her movements and her speeds. So there's her moving in her stationary marching position. Okay, and that's now from here I can increase her step. Oh, in, or decrease is really the wrong word to use, but it's really going backwards. And I don't think that's going to be useful in this gate at all. I use forward and backwards in a different way. So here we'll move forward. So she moves pretty well. Her back legs are coming off the ground. And then if I move in reverse, her gait kind of changes a little bit. So this is where I would have to play around with, which I'm going to adjust here in the remote, the walking steps a bit. But now you can see her back legs are dragging again. So this is where I mentioned in the code, I think I need to compensate for this. It's not just about her physical center of gravity, but it's actually about her momentum and that kind of movement. So this is turning. She's turning left right now. The reverse needs some work. Okay, and then the z-axis, so now if I walk forward, and I can also lower her at the same time. To give her kind of a crouched crawl, or I can stand her big and tall to give her a scary gait. Let's see if I can back her up. Yeah, see, so she doesn't move back too well without adjusting the steps. There we go. So again, some of this I'm going to put in the software so that you won't have to make these adjustments at the remote, because that's obviously impractical. And that also would account for this wobbly kind of motion. Her steps is too big right there, etc. So yeah, with some work, she's going to be running around the living room soon. <laughs> Okay guys, stay tuned for some more updates as they come and look forward to sharing with you. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a good weekend.